So, uh, Chloe, long, long time no see, no look at. Yeah, like I said, I've been seeing you. You are the one who has not been seeing me. <laughs> That's because you're hiding at university or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. What you doing? You know, but no, I, I have a specific question to ask you. Your, your name, what does it mean? So, um, let me first tell you how you remember people name their names. Mm -hmm. so I'll tell you. Children are named according to the circumstances of their birth mm -hmm. and the projection of what their future will be like. So, sometimes it's, um, it's uh, based on knowledge, knowledge as in when you consulted the Babala and said, This one shall do this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a pronouncement of an aspiration to a particular kind of future, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so um, um, normally you'd go and consult a babalao, who either when you're pregnant or when you're born, who would then say that uh, this child is your grandfather, the one who is this that came back. That's why we have names like Baba today, the father has come back again. Or here one day, the mother has sought me again, or mm here -hmm. today, or Babaji day, or Baba one day, you know, they are all names that talk about reincarnation because the Yoruba cosmology really does talk about um, reincarnation rather than heaven, earth, and judgment. Mm -hmm. They talk about, um, so the idea is that if you do well, you'll probably come back as your grandson mm -hmm. or your granddaughter, and then, then um, everybody will love you. And if you didn't do, you did evil, you could come as inanimate, you, you know, you suffer for what you did on this earth, mm. on this earth, mm. you know. Um, and so, my name is Mokolade, which is, I have brought wealth or influence or affluence. And I was named that name because my father got promoted the week I was born. Uh, sometimes we say, well, I mean, the, the language is always a thing, but... I tend to think of it as prosperity. Would that be a word that, that would you, you use more? Because wealth sort of is, is attached to money, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, you know. I said, so the two, three million. Mm -hmm. I brought wealth, mm -hmm. I brought influence mm -hmm. or affluence. So the word Ola is wealth in forms of riches, mm -hmm. it's wealth in form of influence mm -hmm. and affluence, you know. Um, and wealth has not always been the determinant, that money has not always been the determinant of wealth. Mm. Um, the idea of monetized wealth is actually relatively new to Africans in our transforming from um, um, an idea that the works of my hands has fed me to um, the capitalist idea of being a landowner mm. and having people work your land for you. Mm -hmm. So people till their whole land. I mean, if you've read um, Things Fall Apart, for instance, of course. there was a man who grew yams, who farmed by himself. Mm -hmm. So wealth was not something that um, you had as a result of uh, an abundance of workers. Mm -hmm. It was something that you created with your own hands. Mm -hmm. So the idea of investing in something to yield something mm -hmm. is relatively new. It's work related wealth because it was an agrarian economy, you know, we have a farm, we, myself and my sons, and maybe hired laborers who went there to work, you know, so the stronger you were, the more likely for you, the harder you work, the more likely to have money, you know. Okay, well, has, has it worked out for, because obviously you, you left your father's, uh, surrounds and your father's home and you created your own home has that followed you that this wealth this prosperity this well again place? again the fact that i know you is um and people like you is um um influential so mm. that's part of it so it's not necessarily money yeah, that's but, right. you know it all is influence mm -hmm. afterwards and um i i've never really sought wealth mm -hmm. i'm sure that i would have become wealthy if that was where I wanted to go. Well, there's this thing that I say, you know, well, it's, it's said, well, I say it too, which is that uh, if you want money, say a million dollars, you can get a million dollars. But if you want to be the best carpenter on the planet, well, you're going to be the best carpenter and you're going to be a millionaire or whatever. You know, that's this one. Look, um, I know that lots of people who, who are best in what they do mm -hmm. and 
get the money out of their hands as soon as possible because they mm. don't want to be contaminated exactly. by it. Exactly. You know? exactly. I don't, and I don't think that money contam uh, uh, contaminates. Mm. Um, it's just the idea that all that I have is money is just mm. not what I want to be. It's interesting. I didn't want to get. I don't know how we got on this rabbit hole of, of, of money, but uh, I mean, I think of you more of as a I almost yeah intellectual. That's, I guess I know you, you teach at the university, whatever you're doing there now, or whatever you're doing. But when I say, um, I mean, intellectual, I mean, just that, that air, that, that uh, confidence that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've earned this, this study, I've earned the right to study, you know, that kind of thing. How would, you, how would you describe yourself in the world of academia? Because, you know, academia sometimes has a bad name. Look, um, I like to see myself as a teacher. I like to see myself as a researcher. I like to see myself as that man who puts a light on his head and digs down below the earth looking for treasure. Mm. You know, and that's what I like to see myself as um, a producer of knowledge. Um, um, a, a, and I do more than do more than academic. I also consider myself as a cultural activist. A, cu a cultural activist. I'm archivist. Archivist or activist? Activist. Activist. Okay. You know, um, um, I, um, I so it's not just about academia. Mm. Um, I think it's about um, there's a level of like, myself that I consider myself as a public intellectual. And mm, not a public intellectual. Yeah. Not necessarily in terms of dissemination of articulated knowledge, the fact that I can uh, bring music um, that nobody has thought about as something funky or something music enough, mm. and to give a narrative to it and say, oh, we're talking about blues today, and we will not play a single American blues because okay, there is something yeah. bigger than what the Americans have produced. There's a, there's a motherboard, mm. there's a modern knowledge from this part of the world that we can then bring to the world. And it's not contact. It's not, um, it's not we are better than you, or you are not better than us. It's not. It's just saying that, um, like the Chimurenga past saying, there are other worlds out there you've not been told. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, I'm not going to keep you long because you have other things to do, but I did, there's this thing, this might actually, there's this thing that I, I sort of I heard in passing, something about the, the structure of music um, how uh, these the um, numbers, you know, uh, if you have a certain number, it's more in tune with you, say, say the universe, but these other numbers is disruptive, and that's why the, 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 the universe is going a certain way now. I think you'd be the perfect person to research this thing. I wish I would remember what it was. But, you know, there's a certain number, like a number structure to, to music, and there's a certain I, kind of... I, I don't think I understand uh, music in mm. that way. Oh, okay. That way of um, number structures and all. Mm -hmm. I understand it from reading. As, um, from reading? From reading. Re oh, rhythm. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, where you have the sound of, say, um, the kind of music that I listened to in Nigeria growing up in Lagos, mm -hmm. you know, which was um, influences of Juju music, of Fuji music, of America's music, uh, funk, music of people like Shalama. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, I met um, Jeffrey Daniels in Lagos mm. when Pass was back in there. He came there and he lives there now. And how sound was, and I think maybe that's what you mean by number in terms of the rhythm. And then Fela brought the Afrobeat that I, and the kind of, all of these kinds of sounds like um, how, um, Funky Makosa by Manu Dibango traveled the world mm -hmm. and appeared in different forms in hip hop, in rap, in all of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have all of those kinds of um, stuff. And so that's the way I understand music. Mm -hmm. uh, in how I expect um, I'll call something reggae because he has the uh, rubber dub or rock steady sound mm. that's the basis of the rhythm mm. and any other thing that comes out of it um, and I mean there are musicians I mean, the idea of dancehall for instance where 
people also call it reggae. I think maybe there are some of them that are reggae, but most of them I think are hip hop, uh, American influenced, you know. So I don't understand music from that number and how it influences the shape of it. Well, I guess like, that, that's a great example because when you think of dance or you, you think of all those uh, um, uh, sexual, uh, 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 let me put it this way, violent sexual movements, you know, whereas you would think of, a, I don't know, a waltz or whatever as, as something else. You don't understand what I'm trying to say. What do you mean? Well, when 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 they when they say when they when you when you're watching dance hall, what it should say is dance hall. When 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 the girls are shaking, the guys just jump on them. You know, man, like like that. That's sort of a violent act versus if you're just waltzing around. You see? I don't know. I think that's a little judgmental. Oh, yes, it's yes, a, it is. It's an urban yes, culture of a new generation of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I possibly could have danced like that, mm -hmm. but um, you could watch how South Africans dance. How Nigerians dance, mm -hmm. how any of the people dance within their cultures mm -hmm. and determine their the violence. Mm -hmm. you know. I they think Western the dancing is fucking boring. No, this one, they're, they're, I guess, you know. I, okay, let me put it another way. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right, right? I stand, I won't say you stand corrected, but I'm saying that the, w w w the expression, you know what you know, you keep on being expressive, whereas the, the Western way keep, keeps on being contained. Maybe that's what it say. It, it can't. It can't go beyond containment. But the 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 other cultures can go beyond that containment. You know that um, um, the projections of culture and access to music itself um, has been open to Africans. Always been where uh, um, somebody could start a drum session in the village. Somebody could start a drum session on the farm, and people would dance. Just. The stick is banging, pick mm -hmm. it, pick it, pick it, and people are dancing, all right? So there's no access. But Western music, you know, how expensive it has been, you know, somebody has to write the music, find expensive people. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't something they played on the street. Mm -hmm. So access to heat was cultured between, uh, was gentrified. Mm -hmm. And so in the art of being gentrified, there's this way in which uh, Western containment happens as we are civilized, don't dance like that, otherwise you're civil, you're uncivilized. Mm, and, I, and I suppose yeah. that um, black elite, uh, the inheritors of the colonial seat, yes. dance like that. You know, I think it was really stupid, but they dance like that. They, they, I've seen videos of when, um, when England uh, finally, well, was it finally, they never asked off like and stuff Nigeria in the sense of independence. Mm. Uh, the new elite were dancing with the queen, like they are uh, slow and uh, stupid, you know? Well, you know, the whole thing with Rob Mugabe and all that stuff, but uh, anyway. You know, they were dancing mm -hmm. like that on mm -hmm. the eve of independence, waltzing uh, to, oh, yeah. to stuff. And if you listen to the kind of music, um, I have a Nigerian collection of, um, of the early, 60s, like this. Some of the time that Calypso was a big thing in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, and how uh, people sang differently, um, choral music, mm -hmm. which is still big in this country, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so there's a, even the way Western music was, mm -hmm. you know, all of the, all of the rock and Beatles and were influenced by black people playing music from America, mm -hmm. you know that became, you know, it's a reflection of how we are. And somebody said something, and I don't know if it's true or that I even agree with it. It's just pertinent to say here yeah, uh -huh. that um, <clears throat> black people have reading because they, they, as babies, they were put on their mother's backs and they had, they had beat uh -huh. and the bouncing made them grow in reading. I don't know if that's true uh -huh. or anything, uh -huh. but you know, even how we were held as babies mm. is different, and, yeah. you know. And g let me give you this idea of, um, and it's something that is always a point of departure in how somebody is not a gentleman because you don't stand up for a lady, mm. because you don't allow a lady to uh, enter the lift before you. I was raised in a different society. Mm. Women were not disrespected. Women were, what happened was that you got into a train and an older person came, male or female, who stood up for them. Mm -hmm. It was not, the very idea of a woman as a weaker person mm -hmm. comes directly with mm -hmm. the Bible and 
Western ideas, mm. the idea of a man mm. as a breadwinner. Mm. You know, because in an agrarian economy, we all went to the farm. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So True. now to say that I am not a gentleman because I don't stand up for a lady, when I was raised to respect my health as an, an older woman walks into the train, I stand up. The older man walks into the train, I stand up. That idea of unifying cultures where mine is not allowed to 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 be part of the conversation mm. where uh, the norm is western ideas of civilization mm. you know then becomes problematic mm. you know um, um, there's a yoruba proverb a man sees a snake a woman kills it <laughs> as long as the snake is dead oh, yes. so we're not saying that um, a woman cannot be a breadwinner they're not saying you know but again they are easier it's easy it gives more power to african men yeah. to to for women to be weaker vessels for women to be all of those things so that we move yeah. you know but the reality of it is that um i mean it, that's not to say that i won't stand up for a lady or be nice to a lady yeah. especially in the context of the world and um, and femicide and stuff but where I come from, it's not ladies first, it's elders first. Mm -hmm. And I don't okay. think that mind is inferior. Mm. You know, so don't come and tell me crap mm. about yeah. me. Not, which goes to that dance part of it, the contained dance. I mean, somebody was talking about performing in some Western country. And as they performed, everybody kept quiet. And they couldn't tell whether they were doing well or not. Mm. And then when they finished, everybody stood up and clapped. Where is where I come from? There's audience participation. Yeah, yeah. So people are singing the song. People are standing up for their seats to, 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 to dance. People mm -hmm. are, are speaking back to the musician, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, you know, we are not uncivilized. We are just part of the music. We are, we are part of it, you know, which is yeah. what musicians are probably missing out on performing yeah. online now. Because you don't know oh, what the audience oh, yeah. is feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't want to, you know, you get to feed the family and all that stuff. And uh, look, to be continued, you know what I mean? Every once in a while, I bump into you. We do this. Yeah. Thank you for the insight. So I don't get paid. <laughs> no, Claudia, you do not get paid. This is, look, when does T ever pay anybody? That T would be me from the Patterson's taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>